All right, so I've been other places doing other things. And you might think that looks like a vacation, but no, it wasn't. The only reason I tend to travel these days is either to go to Colorado for my sons or to go places for the Army. So this was an Army trip, and those photos are basically from all the one weekend I had off in that whole training. Went and saw as much as I could in the San Francisco area. It was pretty fun, pretty good weekend that way. Um, definitely check San Francisco off my list. I've seen everything I need to see there. But yeah, this, this video is kind of an update for family and friends that are wondering where we're at and how we're doing with our home remodel. And as the title would suggest, it's all about this. So yeah, there you go. It only took six months. Well, yeah, I'd say that's a, a thing of too many pokers in the fire. But, uh, yeah, here's here's the laundry room finally fully grouted. I didn't show any of the footage of grouting because I don't have anything to add to that that's not already on YouTube as far as how to grout. And besides my way of doing things, my methodology would probably offend more sensitive viewers. But yeah, it's not the most perfect tile job you're going to find on YouTube. It's not the most perfect tile job in existence, but it is relatively flat and level. I do have a slight dive down there where the washer's going to sit. But this now gets me to the point where now I can hang cabinets. I can build my cabinetry, countertop stuff. We haven't bought our washer and dryer yet, and I'm really thinking we are going to go with gas. Because we have the hookups for gas in here. Um, so that 220 outlet is just going to be there. Um, those gas ones run off of 110. But gas will be more efficient and more effective at drying clothes than 220 power, so it should keep our overall energy bills down. But yeah, so there it is. There's the tile. Nice Home Depot 18 by 18 light gray with a dark charcoal grout. And uh, that should hold up pretty well for us over the years. I still need to do my transition strip here. All right, I definitely went old school on this one but putting that transition in now you see what it looks like and it goes up from here and up on there covers up that difference but I didn't feel like stringing all of my air lines up here just to drive two nails so I went old school some two inch six penny but if I'm going to do that in this stuff this a stick of this is 35 bucks that's expensive so pre-drill with an eighth inch if you're doing a 16 penny nail and why did I want a two inch nail it would have been nice to have a two-inch four-penny, but I only had these inch and a half, and I wasn't so certain these will grab in to the subfloor as much as I want. Again, I've got almost an inch of buildup here until the subfloor, so I needed to get in there, that gap that was between these two different types of flooring, so fitting in there. So, yeah, I glued it down basically with some silicone, just basic old silicone caulking, the fully silicone stuff, not that. That one there is actually an almond color, which would be better with the wood if if I do that. I don't know that I will. Excuse me. Excuse my reach. Well, yeah, you can see I sink them in there nice and neat so when everything's all dry and set, I can come back and put some carpenter's putty in there, some wood putty in there. And just a couple nail sets, and you now the transition's in. One less detail to worry about on this thing. Putting these cabinets up, these are straight off the shelf Home Depot. It's our new gray line. Um, simple shaker doors, if you can see all that. You'll see it when they're up a little bit better. But this little kit from Craig is what I love. It gives you the, the drill template pattern, whatever you want to call it, jig. Jig's the better word. But the jig for doing pocket holes. Is I'm going to be putting some end pieces on these cabinets. And the way you do that without getting well, that's warped. We'll fix that though. The pocket pocket screws will do that. But to get it in there without being warped is you use a jig like this and you use pocket holes. And there's all kinds of debate on online. All the keyboard commandos and self-professed carpentry experts say pocket holes are horrible, but that's a pocket hole. That right there, the factory uses a pocket hole. There's a slightly different from the way the Craig jig does it, but it'll be the same thing. So you put pocket holes from the backside and that'll secure that to this. And since this will never see any real load, it's just there's a filler piece, it'll be perfectly fine. Now, the thing I haven't tested, which I'm curious about. So, I 
don't know where, I haven't decided, but I think I'm tempted to go all the way up to the ceiling with these cabinets. That leaves a foot of space here, so that's plenty of reach space here, but, but I don't know. I mean, since we're going to be sitting out here and you got the washer dryer coming up somewhere around here, that's quite a bit of reach if it's all the way up. So I think I may, may just set them down right on, you know, the cabinet may sit right on this ledge after a whole six months of cure time this should be about rock solid it actually would probably help i'm gonna lay it level on this and see if that's actually close to being level and then i'll put that on there but yeah so the craig jig um there's a ton of videos out there on how that works but basically on here don't know if my camera will show that but you've got gradations for how thick your material is and you just set this for the material thickness right now it's just under three quarters of an inch and this is three quarter, I think. But yeah, you set it for how deep it is and that controls the depth of your pocket holes. And for something like this, just inch and a quarter, and they're the fine ones. I think it means they're like a number seven. This kit comes with a whole stack of screws and other stuff like there, but if you're doing any number of, of projects like I have, pick up another one of those. You know, a hundred count of those. The inch and a quarter ones I find are the ones I use most often when I'm doing furniture repairs. But yeah, a lot of guys will remove the doors when they're doing this. Um, I'm going to be nuts and not going to do that. But next step is I need to mark out all the studs and then something like this. Let me show you how you do that. All right, simple trick. Inch and a half tape because studs are nominally inch and a half. The fun thing is the old cabinets, I never did fix any of that where they actually were penetrating the studs. So I already knew over here I could see it. But yeah, that basically gives me my marks, once I've got cabs sitting up on this ledge, and those have covered up, and then I'll have this to tell me where my studs are at. And I can see one of the screws in the drywall here. That's the final one, and that is almost about where the cabs are coming to. I'm only going to leave about two foot of space here. Put a small closet rod going up there, and that's for hanging stuff. Okay, so this kit comes with the drill that has the stop you can set that stop for different depths if you need to I don't really feel like it here because I don't know maybe I want to maybe I'll do that in a second I'm going to see and yeah I got to check out my depth and everything like that and then you set it for the stop so you only go as far as you need to into the material but yeah let's get to this curious these things only go in the eighth inch increments so you can't get a sixteenth out of them with this melamine cover on here on four sides I've got another sixteenth inch of buildup so it should be okay if I had another three quarter inch piece of wood I'd do a test run first and that'd probably be the smart thing to do but I'm just gonna dig in See that? I'm gonna set it on the side here. And then you got this plate here. preset and you see that's how far it'll dig in and give me a good set and you can double check that yeah that's going to be a good depth so I do have a preset for three quarter that's the last stuff I was repairing with this did a furniture repair probably two years ago with it 
which for me, uh, this is the baseline Craig. And you can get much better and more expensive kits if you're doing a lot of cabinetry or a lot of furniture. But I don't particularly need those. And work with me here. Because I only use this every once in a blue moon. This simple kit is good for me. pocket holes for this it's probably overkill but you know me overkill is underrated but yeah now we just take that I think for this part of the operation I actually will remove that door and then be able to screw these in because I'll be able to clamp this together yeah so I'm gonna have to do that as much as I you can call me lazy call me crazy both probably apply but I don't like removing my doors when I'm hanging cabinets I usually don't a lot of cabin installers I know, they do it as a matter of course just because it's easier to adjust the boxes and stuff on the wall. For this point I'm going to have to because I want to clamp this style with this filler. And then uh, that will keep those together and I can drive the pocket screws in nice and neat. So let me get to that. <music> children and their Legos. As long as they're happy and they're having fun, they're out of my way, I can get work done. Alright, so I am glad, because this piece is bowed, I'm glad that I put two pieces, or two screws there. This one sucked this in up here, but two down here will bring that middle in and hold it tighter. And then those ones will bring it in, but yeah, it is plywood, so it should be relatively flexible. It's both bowed and a little bit cupped, but that's what you get. All right, it's not perfect, but it's good enough for me. It's not too bad. Might be just a hair of a lip on that, but it's definitely not bowing anymore. So just a tiny lip out there out front. And the reason you'd want to put these on is if you just put the cabinet up there, you may not have enough swing space for that door. It's always better to have enough swing space. That way the cabinet door can swing open a lot farther. And yes, if you paid attention to this remodel, I have violated that rule in one or two places, but for very specific reasons. But for here, when I've got 10 foot of run, I'm going to take up 8 foot of it because I've got 6 inches to, you know, 3 inches each side to do this with. I'm going to do it, and that makes life easier in a lot of ways. That means now I'm pretty much ready to hang this cabinet, and I've seen guys do this both ways. You can attach all three of them on the ground, and if you got three or four dudes to lift that whole assembly up, that's probably the better way. But when you're alone like I am, you do one cabinet at a time. I'll get this secured to the wall.
that for some stupid human tricks. I really need cabinet jacks if I'm going to do cabinetry a lot. And then I noticed it gives you the actual driver you need. And I don't have that size in my normal quick disconnects. Oh, there we go. She did? this yeah that's off level but I'm also looking at lining it up down here with this so that's how it's gonna be because if I put them level I don't think this is actually level all the way across and you'll see a gap open up as it goes so I'm gonna keep it tight to that as I can and the other thing is you look at this I got a pretty dang good tight right here so I'm leaving that as is I'm not gonna need to trim that or nothing I might caulk it a little bit but I'm not gonna trim it Oh, my babies. But yeah, so four screws in the box, two screws under. I'm saying six is going to hold this thing just fine. Those are in the studs. All right. You two are too noisy when I'm trying to actually do camera work. Why is that? Huh? Why are you two so noisy? All right. I put that back on. And the funny thing was is this out of the box was loose up here. That screw. But you look at the reveals, we're not even here, we've got a wider gap here. So now, you loosen these up and play with the setting of those. So if I want this to come out, I'm going to move this this way. And that'll pull this up. And I hate doing this stuff because you're tinkering around with these things, tinkering around with these things, and then to get them set. And I'm looking, the reveal on this door actually looks pretty good. So it's this door that's got to change. Definitely a case if you pay for what you get. I'm looking at how these are mounted and I use the same screw holes they did. So yeah, I've got that level now so the reveal's the same, but it's still down a hair. Now, these have play so I can loosen those up and I can shove the door up a little bit. So again, it's, you know, you're playing with two different planes here. The other thing, pay for what you get. Hear that? You can probably see that. This door is bowed. The whole freaking thing is bowed. Tight at top, tight at top, loose in the middle. Whole door is bowed. There's nothing to do about that because that's just a freaking slab of particle board covered in melamine. So pay for what you get. Let me adjust this again. I got to take the whole door up. So I got, I know I've got a good reveal here. So it's fairly level with the cabinet box. So I'm going to leave those hinges where they're at. At least these adjustments where they're at. I'm going to take this and slide this up the hair I need to get it here. So loosen that, loosen that, slide it up, tighten it. So here we go. And there it is. Nice and even with each other. Good reveal up in here. 
And that's a little bit wider at the top, but not enough to bother me right now. I'm not playing around with these anymore than I have to. <coughs> now I am going to have to take the doors off. I was thinking about this. I don't like taking doors off, but I'm going to have to. Because I need to be able to get screws into the side to put these two styles on each cabinet to put them together. And I'll do that from both sides. So I need the doors off. So here we go. I'm going to remove doors. Alright, at this point I've got it up there. And I, I don't even have anything into the wall here, but it's all here. I'm clamping these two styles together with the clamps holding it up. And then just simply using a pre-drill and drilling through so I can get those screws in. I've got two on that side. I'm at the point I can start taking this down. I've got one, two, three on this side. I'm going to put another one in here. And I'll put another middle one in here so I've got it clamped both directions. But yeah, at this point, I start taking it down. And I'd be very careful about putting too much weight on this because I don't have it secured to the wall yet. But yeah, take those off. They'll be ready for the next box. Um, but yeah, I think I'll get one more screw right here. And yeah, so I just pre drill in there and set that screw in. I think I'll put one more up here too. So I have plenty of screwing for sc screwing these together because again, you're not going to glue anything together with melamine. You know, you can do some epoxies and stuff like that, but you just don't do that with cabinets. You just screw them together so the screws clamp it. And I'd say clamp it first because the screws won't always suck it together, but the clamps will hold it together, then the screws will keep it there. And it's kind of difficult to make sure you get the right reveal. I'm probably a hair off there, like 30 seconds or so, just a fingernail. Whatever, it'll work. And what I was afraid of, too. Yeah, you got some inconsistencies in the cabinet construction, but I'm also certainly getting more of a gap in here. So that, that is what it is. It's going to be how it's going to be. I didn't even check this at all. Yeah, so if any of the cabinets could go up just a hair. They're pretty freaking close. I might shove on this end a little bit before I sink that first screw into the wall, but pretty close. Pretty close to level. So here we go. screws this side, three screws this side, that's pretty well and set and clamped together. And that's how I do those. Now, like I said, I'm probably gonna, golly, just missing a stud here, so there's only this stud line here. So I'll put a, a pre-drill up in here, I'll shove up on the box, and try to get this a little closer to level. It only needs a hair, it doesn't need much at all. I probably still I don't know, I might, might have some room to flex it. We'll see. Just a hair, because I don't want that to keep going and going and going down. I mean, if you had a big row of cabinets, that'd be a big deal. For just three cabinets, it's probably not that big a deal. But I'm still, I'm still going to try. So here we go. All right, that one's in. Shoved up just a hair. And I'm about as dead level as I can get in here. With off-the-shelf stock cabinetry, that'll do fine. And I probably, I don't know, I'll keep an eye, I'll put the level in this box too, but probably not worry about it much from here on out. Now this box, obviously, it's a good thing it's a center box, because I can only get one line of screws up here, so... Or I put two in here, I'll probably do the same thing, just two screws in here. When this box gets clamped to either box on either side, this box is going to end up with a line of screws here and here. It'll be solid, it'll be fine. But I'm not sure, I think... With the end of these things being finished, I think I'm not going to do that end piece. I might be able to take that back. Um, I don't think I will. I don't think I'm going to mess with that. I'm going to leave it just like this. That gives me, what was it to the stud? It's like 30 inches or so. So a lot of space in here so we can tuck an ironing board, hanger. That'll be good. It'll be a good function. But yeah, since these are, these are all done, and yeah, I, I still would have. You see how this, this gives you room to open this up all the way. I still would have done that insert there. I mean, you could have gone, you could have gone without, but you can see that, that back there would end up hitting that wall a little bit when it's trying to close. And you could get, you can get shorter ones or you can slice this down on your table saw, whatever. 
I mean, but I just put the three inches in there and I think that'll be fine. All right, I don't know that I'm gonna say much more. I'm just gonna get it done and show you what it looks like when it's done. Because I just need to work. I'm not sure what time washer and dryer is showing up. They could be today, could be tomorrow. I'm not sure. And I'd like to have this done before those guys get here. Now this is probably in the realm of only something I will notice because I'm the one with my nose in it. But this is the reason why a lot of guys, if you got a big enough cabinet crew, you put the boxes together on the ground and then you put them on the wall. But you can see that 16th inch here. Oh, and this thing bows too, that's fun. So it's bigger down here, thinner here, bigger up there, but you can see that. If you put them together down on the ground, you can clamp them away to where you get them all flush and neat. But like I said, you stand back even this far and it doesn't much make a difference. It'll be hidden in between the doors. So only I will probably notice about that and anybody watching this video. But that is the reason. I mean, that I just wanted to show that. So that's the reason why. I mean, I've got this box all the way against the wall, but inconsistencies in the drywall is it does that number across its distance. It has waves in it. It's never flat and smooth. You'll get kickouts like this. And that could also, it might not be the drywall, it could be both the drywall and the cabinet itself if the cabinet's got inconsistencies in it. So if you got a bigger cabinet hanging crew, you would set all three of these on the ground, get all these flush, these flush, flush here, and you get it all together, and then you'd set it up on the wall. A lot of times put a ledger board down there, so you can cap it on there and then have everybody drive their screws in, shim where you need to, do what you need to to adjust it, make it perfect. But mm, I'll be honest, most cabinet crews won't do that. This is good enough. And for me, it's perfect. Um, this is in here. I've got three screws that side. Oh, I've got to do some middle screws in here too. So I'll put some more screws in here, two more. And then I'll put them on the wall as well. And same thing, get that little bit of dive. And that may be, again, inconsistencies in the cabinetry, so I'll shove it up. It won't affect this stuff. This stuff is all on the wall. It's staying where it's at. But it's probably just the weight of the box going out of square a little bit, and I can shove that back in. All right, there it is. Cabinets are in. And that leaves me about 25 inches of space here. But I decided also another reason not to put the end cap on this is when I put that rod across, I can drill all the way through and clamp it to there instead of just screwing it to there and it'll stay. No, I'll make it work. Um, I doubt I'm going to show all that. That's probably all I'm going to say about this laundry room. The machines are getting delivered tomorrow. So I'll have machines in. I'll end up once the machines are in and once I space out how many laundry baskets I do, I'll figure out how to do my countertop. And I'm going to bring the countertop all the way to this end. Oh, you got glasses, baby? Glasses. Yeah, glasses. All right. For friends and family that are curious, that wanted to see where we're at and how we're doing, then this is probably one of the last rooms I'm hitting this year. Obviously out of time this year. Daddy. What, baby? Yeah. Uh-huh. But yeah, thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys on the next one.